Training nurses from Dunkwa on Ophain, the central region, slept over at the Ministry of Health yesterday in protest over their unpaid allowances. The angry trainee nurses traveled to Accra to demand answers for the delay in the payment of the allowances since both the Ministry of Health and Finance had failed to provide reasons for the delay. The trainee nurses converged at about 9 a.m. Monday at Independence Square with hope of meeting officials of the Ministries of Health and Finance. The trainee nurses, numbering over 500, are demanding payment of three-year allowance and have vowed to remain at Independent Square until they get response from the appropriate authorities. We just came here not on a demonstration basis. We are just coming here to plead with the Ministry of Health so that they will release our allowances for us because we've been in the school for three years and two years. Some have completed. Without a staff ID, you can't work. Our monies are with them and also with the clearances. If we don't live here with, without it, meaning the reassurance will still continue. We've been reassured for more than a year. But, so I understand you have some issues with the police too. Exactly what are those issues? When we enter this place, um, first, they told us that it's unlawful entry, but when we entered, we didn't know at first. We thought we were coming to park here, even with one bus. And another man directed us to here. It was a policeman. He directed us inside. So we were thinking because he directed us inside, then we are just coming to park so that we leave. When we entered here, they said we've been detained. We were not allowed to go to the Ministry of Health. Some of us found our way to go there. When we went there, they sacked all of us. The police car came there to sack us from the Ministry of Health that we can't be there. So we should come back to uh, the Independence Square because they would speak to us at the Independence Square. So we came here and we were detained in this place. So it is not that they are just trying to speak to us. We are share us with all sort of words but with that's those ones we are so tired of those words oh yeah we came here about four times we told them still if you are not hearing good news we will come back here so they are well there. and so as a stance now you haven't heard anything from the ministry of health have you heard something from them all right they came here and did the same thing the same stories they've been telling us what same story that they will come and do it for us yes still they are not coming so my, my colleagues are saying, unless they do it for us, we are not living here. So as it stands now, the police is not ready to allow you to go to the health ministry. Yeah. You are stuck here at the Independence Square. Yeah. Will you guys move back to Dunkwa of Fame? Unless they do it for us. So if you do not get any response from the Ministry of Health... You are not leaving. We are not leaving here unless we get a response. What are you going to do when you when you remain here? We will stay here till they, they respond to us. We will sleep here. We have everything in our buses. We will sleep here till they do it for us. The police advised the student to return to Dunkwao while the matter is being looked at. But the student vehemently refused to leave the square. This prompted the police to call in reinforcement. After some hours, public relations officer of the Ministry of Health, Tony Goodman, arrived at the scene with hope of convincing the student to return, but that was to no avail. He over explained that they are not to blame for the delays. What really happened was that the names that were submitted excluded some of them, some were under submitted, some of the names were bloated. So we asked them to go and do the right thing, but those names that were submitted, we paid everybody. You know, if you submit names to Ministry of Health, we will forward those names to uh, finance. So it was the names we sent to finance that they paid. So we have actually asked the principals to recollect the names that were not submitted. Uh, we, they've now submitted that and we have forwarded that to Ministry of Finance for clearance. We don't pay salaries, we don't pay allowances. We only receive the names from the school and then we submit that to them. We can sit in Accra and conjure names and start paying them. It was names that were submitted to us that we also forwarded to Ministry of Finance and those names have been taken care of. It is just unfortunate that they did not receive receive their money but I want to plead with them to exercise patients to go back to their various schools whilst we continue working with Ministry of Finance to see uh, to the payment of their uh, allowances. As at 6 p.m. when the news team was leaving the Independent Square, the trainee nurses were still there with no intention of leaving the scene. Matilda Homaga for Joy News. I'll tell you what, they did leave that particular place, but they ended up sleeping over 
at the Ministry of Health, uh, where my colleague Gladys Osei Oredu was with them this morning, and uh, she reports that the Health Minister, Alex Segefia, spent the night at the park with the nurses, assuring them to resolve the impasse in two weeks. The nurses say they are now waiting for government to bus them back to their destination. We're currently here at the Ministry of Health where the trainee nurses camped the entire night. Well, they are saying that until their problem is resolved, until whatever they are asking for is given them, they are not moving an inch from the ministry. Currently, we have an official here who is asking them to go back to the independent square, but they are simply refusing. We are, we're going to try to find out from them what exactly will, will get them off the premises of the Ministry of Health. <laughs> Will nobody talk to me? Good morning. I just, no, currently, what is going to really get you off this place? Uh, so you, no, by, by you saying it, then you get. The students have agreed to talk to us on condition that their faces will not show. So uh, we'll get to talk to them and find out from them what exactly is the problem. Their problem is um is about student training allowances, and uh, so far so good. We've made follow-ups, but as to whether the follow-ups are going to yield results or not, we don't know. But the good news is that yesterday we were able to drag the Honorable Minister the newly sworn in minister out of his cage. Let me put it that way. Please, if I am mistaken or using words which are not appropriate. And he came as a father midnight. He sat on the ground and he was having conversation, a dialogue with us. And he made us present our problems to him, which he promised of addressing the problem. Had it not been that the bodies which he has to contact are not in the country at the moment, he would have even addressed our problem today. So he has taken the leaders amongst us, our contacts, of which he is going to communicate to our people through us. So we are looking forward to him addressing our problem. And so far, so good from the look of things and what he told us, we know he is going to deliver. And to send a message clear to the world and to the people of Ghana that not that we are agitating, or not that we are demonstrating, but we are demanding for what is rightfully ours. And we are going back and sit down, wait for the minister to respond. But what we're going to do is that in the next two weeks to come, or in the next three weeks to come, should there not be any positive result, then we have no choice than to reorganize the, ourselves and come back again. Um, where did the idea of coming all the way from Dunkwao to Accra come from? Uh, the idea of coming all the way from Dunkwao to Accra is that we know we have a problem with our financial clearance. We've contacted the administration on countless occasions, but our principal has said that his hands are clean and he has done his part as far as the payment of the allowance is concerned. And he doesn't issue clearance. And if we want our clearance, then we should come to the ministry. It is because the ministry that employs us. So we also took his advice and we've come at long last, all the way from Dunkwa down here, for the authorities to tell us if we duly qualify the allowance, then they must do something because others have benefited from it. So we don't see the need why we should sit down and fold our arms for our investment to go down the drain because we deserve to get the money. How many, uh, how long now have you been given any allowance? The, since, since we were um, enrolled from 2012, nobody has taken even a peso. Yeah, it is an accumulated um, amount which we are going to take. For years, that has been the culture. It is accumulated for a period of year, then thereafter they make arrangements and they pay it to us. We also have a session of our colleagues who have completed, that is the health assistant trainees. And very soon their results are even in, and very soon they will be posted. And it is the biometric registration that will mandate them to receive their salary when they begin what working. 
and they haven't gone through the biometric registration. Whose cost was it to come all the way from Dunkwal? You hired buses. Whose cost was it? Um, we, 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 we just absorbed the cost. The student body, everybody contributed to it because we saw the need that it is our own money, so we must spend to get the money. How are you going back? Um, I was going back, the minister yesterday met us and uh, he promised taking care of our transportation back to school and we know he's going to deliver. Well, they have now been convinced to move from the Ministry of Health and go to the Independence Square where we are following up to check on what exactly is going to happen at the Independence Square. Well, let's now get the very latest on this particular one. Let's go now to the Independence Square Live and speak to my colleague, Mikaela Rista Anderson, who is kindly there and uh, has a lot more to tell us. So, Mikaela, uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, what's the latest on this? Uh, have the buses arrived yet? Are they getting ready to leave? Mikaela? Hello, Tentanini. Can you come again with a question? Yes, I, I can hardly hear you. Okay. I was asking, what's the situation uh, now at the Independence Square, the Black Star Square? Have the buses arrived and are they getting ready to leave? No, the buses have not arrived. I can, as I speak to you, scores of nurses from the Dunfan or Fane in the Central Region have converged here at the Independence Square to register their displeasure about their unpaid allowances. Um, they are, as of yesterday, they were about 560 but. This, as of this morning, most of them have gone back and most of them draped in their uniform, green, brown, and even with their guys, white and khaki. They are still here. They are not doing anything. What they are doing is that they are sitting on the chairs here. And what they are saying is that, well, government gave them the assurance that within two weeks, they are going to resolve their grievances. But then they are not convinced. They want a fixed date and a formal letter to that effect. Otherwise, they are not leaving. And like you rightly asked me, government says they are procuring buses to come and take them to their various destinations. But the nurses are saying they are not ready to move without a fixed date and um, a formal letter to that direct. And I have one of them here who just moved away. But I'll try and get to the PRO for the ministry, Tony Goodman. Mm. And... And, well, he's saying that he's not ready to speak as well. Okay. Because I but just asked him, posed the question to him that, well, this is what the nurses are saying, that they are not ready to move until they have a formal letter to that effect. Uh, exactly. M Mikhail, so, so I was just about asking, is, is it a case that uh, they do not trust government or believe that government will stick to its word? Is that a case? Chen Chahini, the line is very faint. Yes, I'm asking, I can that, you. is it a case that they, they do not trust government or think or believe that government is going to stick to the arrangement is already uh, hard with them. Sorry, Mik but I can't hear. Okay, uh, Mikaela, we'll try and uh, get you back on the line. We'll try and uh, bring Mikaela Anderson back on the line so she can tell us much more about that because by the latest she's reporting is that the trainee nurses are saying, uh, well, even though, uh, even if the buses are provided, they will not leave the Black Star Square until the ministry gives them a signed letter. Uh, that will obviously enumerate the uh, the concerns and in fact all the all the uh, arrangements there. Okay, let me go back to the phone lines. Uh, I'm told Mikaela is back on now. Mikaela, can you hear me now? Is it better? Uh, can you speak up? Okay, so I'm asking now. The the trainee nurses are saying that they would they would not leave uh, even when the buses are brought to them, even when the the, the arrangements are done. Now, is it a case that uh, they do not trust government or believe that government will stick to its word? Well, what they are saying is that we are not ready to move. They want a letter. They want to see a formal letter to that director that, well, we are going to pay them on this day. Because if you say in two weeks, when exactly in two weeks? Is it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? They want to see a formal uh, letter to that. Because according to them, most of them are going to complete in the next three months. And they are worried. In fact, most of them are distraught. If you can even see it from their faces, they look very uh, uh, sad. And so they are here. They are saying they are willing to spend another night here in Accra if government doesn't give them uh, a formal letter. All right, Mikaela, thank you very much. To you on this day. Sure, thank you. Thank you very much, Mikaela, for that update. We'll be coming back to you pretty shortly for some more on that. But still on the issue of trainee allowances, government has called a bluff of some 48,000 teacher trainees in the country who are boycotting class as a means of putting pressure on government 
to restore their trainee allowances. The trainees uh, Monday stayed out of class as they began an indefinite strike to push for the reversal of government's decision to scrap trainee allowances. But Deputy Minister of Education in charge of tertiary, Samuel Lokujeto Ablapwa, in response says government will not be cowed into restoring the allowance. We have um, constantly appealed to the Teacher Trainees Association of Ghana. We have said that the reforms that we have carried out are reforms that are in the national interest and in their own interest. But for those reforms, more than 9,000 Ghanaians will not have had access to our colleges of education to train as teachers. The allowances became counterproductive. Because of the allowances, a quota system emerged where the colleges of education were operating below 40% capacity. All 38 public colleges of education were were becoming extinct because of the allowances regime. So when we reviewed the regime and replaced the allowances with a student loan trust, as I speak to you, more than 4,100 trainees are receiving student loans. As I speak to you, we continue to feed the, the teacher trainees three times a day. Remember that with the passage of Act 847 recently, the teacher training institutions have become tertiary institutions. At the tertiary level, we are training teachers in the universities, University of Education, Winneba, University of Cape Coast, who do not receive allowances, who are not fed thrice a day. There ought to be equity. We need to be able to uh, address the teacher deficit. The teacher deficit in this country is, 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 is placed at 40 percent, at, sorry, at 40,000. We, you cannot address this deficit if you do not, as it were, carry out these reforms, which allows for you to bring in more people to train them as teachers. So we have had this arrangement, which has served us well. We carried out these reforms two years ago, and uh, enrollment shot up by 63.8%. And so we will continue to appeal to all uh, to uh, uh, accept reforms which are in the national interest uh, and in the interest of these trainees. But for these reforms, 60% of the trainees now will not be in school, will not have had access to tertiary education. So what do you want? Keep the allowances for a few people or replace it with a student's loan, continue to feed them thrice a day and open up the space for many more people, more than 63% of Ghanaians to come in uh, into the colleges of the education so we can have more trained teachers and then improve on the standard of education. We think that Ghanaians will choose the latter and that is what is in the national interest. So we can uh, to stay in you say, would that count to, to go back to the old system? From, from what I gather, cabinet is not in a position to review uh, and go back to the old system. This is serving as well. It's in the national interest. Well, you're watching News Desk here on Joy News Multi TV. We're taking a break here. We'll be back shortly with some more. Stay with us.